Hello everybody, welcome to our channel, Recognizing Our Rights, a place that aims to showcase the best constitutional audits. And man, do we have quite the treat for you guys from Honor Your Oath, where he ended up suing the Brevard County Sheriff's Department for the unlawful arrest that took place way back in 2013. As for the footage you're about to see, I'm going to keep it completely raw, but we want to encourage the rest of you to go subscribe to Honor Your Oath and let them know the Recognizing Our Rights said hello, as not only will I be leaving links down below to this guy's channel, in his original video, but I'll also leave a link down below to the court case in which On Your Oath sued the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. And now let's jump right into this stupidity. Do you have unlimited authority to make requests or demands on, on that day, on October 23rd, 2013, did you have unbounded, unlimited authority to make requests and demands of Mr. Gray uh, such that Mr. Gray's refusal to comply or acquiesce with such request or demand would subject him to arrest, could subject him to arrest for resisting or disobeying you. Yes. Come on. Doing? Good. Get ready in here. For what? I'm being detained or anything? No, you're not being detained, but you, you, doing, you've sir? made yourself Good, part you? of this traffic stop. No, I'm observing the traffic stop. Who are you? Uh, I'm a journalist gathering content for a story. I'm sorry? Journalist gathering content for a story. For a story? What kind of story? Uh, just a story I'm working on. What's the name of your story? What, what company do you work for? Hold on a second. What's your name? Oh, I see. You're one of those kind of guys. Okay. Well, do me a favor. Stand over here in the shade. All right. But don't stand behind this deputy while he's conducting. That's why I was standing more over there when you guys well, pulled in. Well, actually, you were, sir. So stand over there, him. like I asked you to, but, so you're not behind this deputy while he's conducting okay. business. I'll stand over here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Now you're trespassing, so they want you to leave. Okay, you went and got, got her to trespass me, is that what you're saying? She I'm, not, I'm not asking you, I'm not going to argue or fine, dispute I'm it not... with you. I'm telling you, leave and leave right now. Leave and leave right now. Do, can I get your name and badge on before I go? Leave and leave right now. Can I get your name and badge on No, sir. You can leave and leave right now. Okay. I'll tell my wife to move it. I'll move over here on the public right away. Put them behind your back. They're back there. Don't resist me. You don't have to tell me your name, and I'm not going to ask you again. I'm not resisting. Why am I doing this? For obstructing justice and trespassing. You told you to leave several times. You failed to do so. I don't understand why you're being difficult, sir. I'm just documenting the traffic stop. You're not you're not related to media? You don't have a public relations card with a media card? Actually, I do. I'm with photography. It's not a crime. Yes, it is a crime. Spread your feet. I'm not going to ask you. Don't, don't pull away from me. Don't resist me in any way. Resistance will be futile and you will get hurt. I'm not going to resist. If you don't tell your wife to cooperate, she'll go to jail. Oh my God, look what you did to my phone, man. I didn't do that to your phone, sir. You did that to your phone. I'm trying to stop. Do you hold him? I'm not, I'm not going to resist. I'm fine. I know you're not. Are you holding there? All right, sir. Watch your back. Okay, what's the best way to go in? But first. But first. Okay. You will be booked in as John Doe. And because you're not cooperating, You'll be booked in as John Doe, and you'll sit in jail for 48 hours until they determine who you are by your family. I'm not asking you again. I've already asked you once. You want to play that whole bullshit with me? Go right ahead and do it at the jail. You can kiss my ass. That's what you can do. How did he interfere with the traffic stop? Well, again, 
it's almost four years ago, so I'll go off my best of my recollection, but please do. He did something to cause Deputy Cook to stop his investigation, or he interfered somehow to cause him to stop his traffic stop to call for a backup unit. Um, so, therefore, he, he interfered. That's an obstruction. And to the best of your knowledge, as you sit here today, the only thing of which you're aware, as we sit here today, that Mr. Gray did or omitted to do uh, that prompted Deputy Cook to call for backup was photograph and or video record Deputy Cook's traffic stop. Is that correct? Yes. You're not aware of Mr. Gray having done anything else to prompt Deputy Cook to call for backup. Is that right? Correct. And yet, your testimony is also that it sounds to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that because Mr. Gray's photography and videography and or videography prompted Deputy Cook to call for backup, Mr. Gray committed the crime of obstruct obstructing the traffic stop is that correct yes and so again I just want to be absolutely crystal clear your testimony is that mr. gray obstructed the traffic stop yes and he did so by photographing and or video recording deputy cook his actions caused him to stop his traffic stop interfered with his traffic stop which is what the obstruction is. And the actions to which you refer that were undertaken by Mr. Gray were photography and or videography, right? I'm going to assume being too close to it also, which is what made him nervous. Your testimony what? was that Mr. Gray was 35 feet from <clears throat> him. Is that correct? Approximately, yes. And so by photographing and or video, uh, video recording Deputy Cook from 35 feet away, Mr. Gray committed the crime of obstructing Deputy Cook's traffic stop. Is that right? Yes. Okay. After arriving on scene that day, did Deputy Cook express any concerns to you about any risk of harm posed by Mr. Gray to Deputy Cook? No. Whatever Mr. Gray was doing before I got there caused concern to Deputy Cook, which is why I called for backup. And Deputy Cook in calling for backup, conveyed the basis for his concern to you, right? Yes. And the basis for his concern was that Mr. Gray was taking photographs, right? Yes. Deputy Cook didn't convey any other details to you about what Mr. Gray was doing, right? I don't think he did, yes. Correct. Okay. You asked Mr. Gray to move closer to the building. Yes. What happened next? Uh, I made contact with the director or manager of the building and asked her if she wanted him removed from the property. And what did she say? Yes. Uh, and what did you do then? Uh, I went back and talked to Mr. Gray and told him now he's trespassing and he had to leave the property. Did Mr. Gray uh, exit the private property onto and, and enter the right-of-way? Yes. And did he do that prior to you arresting him? Yes. And then what happened? I arrested him. Um, 
on the right of way in front of this traffic stop. So when you effected the arrest, you and Mr. Gray were on the right of way? Yes. Is it your understanding that Mr. Gray committed a crime by leaving his van in the parking lot after you issued him a warning to leave? I believe it was part of the trespass crime, yes. So someone can be subject to arrest not only by refusing to leave after having been issued a trespass warning, but also by leaving property, personal property like a van, on someone else's property after having been issued a trespass warning. Is that your understanding of the law? No, I don't think just leaving personal property on someone else's property is a crime. I think if you're trespassing and you're told to get in your van and leave and you just walk away and leave your van with your wife and kid in it, that, that's part of that element for that particular incident. And I want to make sure I understand you. Okay. Okay. Your testimony is that even if he had immediately departed the property and proceeded on to, say, the right-of-way, but left his van, still left his van in the parking lot, he could, he could have still been subject to arrest for trespassing after warning because of the fact that he left not his van in the parking lot. Not just because he left the van in the parking lot. Why else then? I guess the question would be, why leave your van with your child and your wife in it when you could just get in the van and take the van, your property, off of the property that you're being trespassed from and alleviate the problem? I guess that would be the question. It's not it's, the question. Well, I mean, I know. You're, it's, it's not, not the, question. the question. But to the answer question your question is, is, no, it's not a crime to just leave property somewhere. Okay. And that is the question. Okay, yes. The, my question is... No, it's not a crime to just leave it there. It's only a crime if he refuses to remove his person yes. from private property. So it's part of the trespass crime, but then now we go back to the obstruction crime. If I tell him, take your van and your wife and your child and leave this property that you're being trespassed from verbally, and you refuse to do that, now doesn't that go back to now he's not complying with that? I don't, I don't, I mean... I want to make sure right. I understand. If he would have just left, it would have, it would have, right. problem would have been solved. Okay. But he didn't want to leave. Correct. He wanted to photograph the traffic stop, right? Right, which we told him he could. Yeah. And we told him where he could do that, but he didn't yeah. want to do that either. Yeah. And you told him that he could do that closer to the building, yes. right? Yes. Closer to the private property, yes. further into the private property from which you then trespassed him from. Trespassed him from. Correct. Right. I believe if he would have complied and gone up on the sidewalk by the building to video all the video he wanted or photographs, it, there would have been no situation. I believe if after he was told he was trespassing, if he would have got in his van and drove away, there would have been no situation. I believe if he didn't get out and walk into the grass there and cause some kind of fear or some kind of concern with Deputy Cook, I wouldn't have even had to come to the scene. So if he would have just, but I don't want to say, if he would have just been a nice guy and if I said, hey, sir, can you just go stand up there and take all the video you want? But he didn't want to. He wanted to prove his point and here we are. If he had been a nice guy. Yes. You told him to that he can kiss your ass, right? I, no, I didn't tell him that. You didn't say that? I said it, but I didn't tell it to him. That was after the fact. That was his recording still going. Okay. 
But Mr. Gray was the guy who was not a nice guy that day. That is correct. Okay. The time is 12.42. That concludes the deposition of Brian Stoll. We are now off record. Oh my goodness, what an abysmal level of stupidity from that tyrant. I've said many times that there are certain cops that I have considered to be the stupidest of all time, but none of them, and I mean none of them, pale in comparison to the smooth-brained idiot. Here's what I heard from him this entire time as to why he arrested on your oath. Feelings, 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 speculation, speculation, and more feelings. To make matters worse, there's just so much more I have to say. This brain-dead buffoon admitted to soliciting a trespass and also admitted to arresting on your oath for leaving his van in that parking spot, even though he clearly said that leaving property somewhere is not considered a crime. And then he tries to deny the fact that he told on your oath to kiss his ass when it was directly said on camera, and that smile when he said he arrested on your oath. That alone should tell you that he found pleasure out of trying to ruin a man's life. Sadists like him don't deserve to be a cop, let alone a sergeant. In the past year and a half I've been highlighting these First Amendment auditors, I have never seen someone so careless, so stupid, and so sadistic of a cop. The tyrants in Mesa, Arizona, and Somerville, Indiana could be looking at this moron, and laughing at him. I know I sound angry when I talk about this idiot, but it's really more so of me being baffled than angry. And the reason why I'm not mad at this is because of the court case, Gray vs. Ivy, aka On Your Oath Suing Brever County Sheriff's Office, where Judge Roy Dalton stated, there is no sovereign immunity for false arrest. As for this lawsuit that took place within Brever County Sheriff's Office, I do not know the exact outcome of this, but I do know it can be discovered through a public records request. And I will be leaving a link down below to the court case dubbed as Gray vs. Ivy in case you want to see the full details for yourself. Not only that, but I'm also going to be leaving contact information down below to the Brevard County Sheriff's Office in case you want to hold these scumbags accountable. If you choose to redress your grievances, we highly advise you to be as professional as can be, and like the acronym of our channel says, let them hear our roar. The most important thing we need you to do, however, is go subscribe to Honor Your Oath and let them know that recognizing our rights said hello and give them as much support as possible because he was recently arrested at the time of me recording this video and all of his cameras, including his iPhone, was confiscated. I'll be leaving a link down below to this guy's channel, his original video, and the recent arrest video. Apart from all that, I'll see you all later, but remember to never stop loving the Constitution.